bit to the one that they liked. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, good morning, everybody, and welcome to uh, the uh, Shropshire Planning Pension Planning Pension Board. Um, the first item on the agenda uh, is election of chairman. So we have our own little leadership challenge in Shropshire starting today. Um, so uh, can I have uh, any nominations for uh, chairman, please? We've got to nominate Dave Wright. Um, Dave, Dave Wright. Uh, any, uh, any other nominations, or is everybody second that nomination? I second it. Second it, okay. In that case, there's no other nominations. I'm happy to hand over to uh, our new chair for this meeting, uh, Dave Wright. Thank you. Thank you, James. And we should point out at this stage that the meeting currently, we have got one member online. We've got three members in the room. And to be tolerant, we should be two member reps and two employer reps. Currently, we've only got one employer rep due to the uh, last night. And uh, one of the um, employer reps called off for personal reasons. So with the rest of the uh, committee's permission will carry on with the meeting, but there'll be not, not a decision making forward anyway. So, um, is that okay with the other three members, please? Mike, yeah. thank you. Okay, we'll go to the agenda then. Item number two on the agenda is apologies. We've received two apologies from Liz and from Claire. Um, both got valid reasons. Can we accept those apologies, please? Accepted. Thank you. Item three on the agenda, declarations of conflict of interest. Do any members, having seen the agenda, seen the papers, do they have any conflicts of interest, please? No conflicts. Thank no. You. Item four is the minutes of the previous meeting. Held on the 29th of April 22. Agenda item four, you can just go through page by page. Page one, well, hopefully you will receive the you will receive the uh, minutes confirmed. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, page one. Any anything you want to discuss? No. Page two. Page no. three. No. Page four. So now are you happy that I sign these minutes off as a true record of that meeting? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Just in public question time, there's no members of the public present. Do we have any public questions, please? No, just saying public questions. Thank you, no public questions. Moving on to item six. Uh, the administration and regulatory updates. Debbie, can you update us, please? Thank you, Chair. You'll see from the report, um, the administration, uh, I haven't done um, um, a big update because a lot just went to committee, but there were some additional items that have come through since committee that I have included in this report. Um, one around the scheme advisory board's annual report that's recently been published. Um, it's always almost two years out of date because of the information they collect is uh, this one was from 2021. Um, and it's just interesting to, to see some of the statistics with the fund membership growing and the, the size of the funds growing, how many employers are growing within the, the fund. So I think everything reflects what is happening in Shropshire. Um, so at the moment, we seem to be uh, running along lines of, of the, na the national sort of LGPS. The, also, the PLSA has just published a research project that 
isn't doesn't come up with any answers, but has actually sort of pulled together all of the issues and the challenges that we've got across the LGPS. And there was nothing in in that policy uh, in that research project that, from my I've, I've read it through, but I haven't had time to actually completely do a report on it yet. Um, but it's it's commenting on everything that we were aware of, especially our aim of recruitment retention and sort of knowledge pool. Um, and, and that sort of aspect. So I think the um, the highlights in that are exactly as we've been reporting recently. Uh, again, both of the employers. I'm happy to take questions on this or the report that went to um, committee chair. Thank you, Jamie. Did the pensions committee bring any um, big observations from the period before this? No. No. Are there any questions, Mike? Uh, yeah. Can I, can I go back to the uh, well, um, well, the June committee paper um, on admin um, section seven? If people have got that in in front of them, that was a performance and the team update. And read really that you could be on section seven two and seven three, which is about. Um, Section 7.2 was the uh, year end me member data submitted to the fund, the uh, number of got, um, and the status of that. And section 7.3 was about data cleansing. Uh, and still, we were still, I think, in June, uh, pretty outstanding on that, um, on the data cleansing reconciliation. Yeah, I can. The the member update, currently we've had all of the year end, their, their month 12 submissions of the data from all of the employers. There's still a couple of employers that we haven't had their reconciliation reports from them. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, under the legislation, the pension scheme rules say that they have to have everything to us by the end of June. So, of course, um, we're now in a position that we can actually chase them. So anybody who's outstanding, sorry, that's saying it wrong. We have been chasing them because we wanted the information by the sort of the end of April. Um, but those outstanding now are in contravention of the rules. So there's, there's only a couple. But um, what we're doing is we are still just cleansing the data and looking for um, missing leavers forms, uh, documentation around that area and Currently, I haven't got the statistics Mike, of how many are outstanding, but we have got um, chases going on with all of the employers around the area that um, we need, especially for the valuation. Uh, we do know that there are, um, I think, 700 at the moment unprocessed leavers that are at, at a status that um, are in a holding status. And of those, uh, I think there were 70 that were actual ones that um, we needed to chase the leader's documentation from the employers because they needed to actually have a deferred benefit calculated. So we're on top of what we need from the employers. We have still a good working relationship with our employers in Shropshire. We have data of four of them. The, the data is usually robust. We do need to chase a few um, and buy monitoring their breaches, who's late, which um, late with their monthly returns, but also late with some of their leaders documentation, which is the documentation we need to calculate a benefit. So if somebody's left the fund, we need them to confirm the pay, um, just date of leaving, that, that sort of um, aspect. So we, we are short of some, um, and we are monitoring those and chasing them. Is do you think this is resolvable before the end of the year, Dennis? Um, It won't be fully resolvable, but what we do is that we give the actuary an, an up to date. For the valuation, it's, it's, resol it's resolvable as far as the benefits are concerned for the individuals, because we will make sure that we get that information from the employers. Um, if it's not resolvable by next week when we need to send the data off to the actuaries, the employers have all been clearly told that any information or data that they haven't sent us in time to ensure their records are correct for the valuation may impact on their employer's contribution rate. So we've done that communication to all of our employers to ensure that they were aware and that they needed to put resources into this area. 
Um, and it's not in a, 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 a drastically different situation to every other valuation that we come in. We, we're never able to, by the, the date we have to send the valuation data off, to have 100% calculated all of the levers um, up to the 31st of March just. So there's always a, a few unprocessed levers that go to the actuary, um, and that's uh, taken into account. That They have all of our data, um, and we have all of our statuses logged nowadays we're even more accurate to know that something has happened to somebody somebody may have left because we're having a monthly data upload from the employers if somebody has left that payroll by the end of say march because we're now we will have had that data at the end of april so in the middle of may we will be processing and knowing that we were short of something so we can already get to chase it um, so the actuary already knows because we changed the status of that member. So as they know they're not an active member, they just haven't got the benefit calculated yet. Um, so so they have um, very good data from us to actually know what the status of the records are across the employees. Could I just um, add one more thing for that? On, on section 75, um, I was intrigued because you say the pension it refers to pensions increase that went through this year 3.1%. Um, and then uh, in that value, if you said some issues were, were, were appeared uh, and lessons are being learned from the issues that appeared, but I, I found that a bit cryptic. Sorry, Mike, yeah. Um, what we did is, is the lessons learned was more about the process. Is our process um, as slick as it should be? Are we ensuring that we're picking up any changes to the, the system that the system provider may have put in over the last year? Um, what we, the, the pensions increase uh, this year was affected by the pensions reconciliation and the rectification exercise that we done last year. And there is some, some changes in the software that have just sort of um, worked to work with that. And I think we worked on the on the ball with ensuring that our processes um, on the system were calculated in the way they should be. This was picked up because we run the pensions increase through a test system first. So there were some items picked up in that that we should have already known about. So that's where we learned a lesson that we need to ensure that we're ticking off every single item that comes in the software update, that the team has fully understood what that meant to us. They, the team had, uh, had seen that, that something had changed, but a decision had been made that that didn't affect us because we had already done our pensions rectification at the back end of the previous year, but actually it did. So what we had to do was just understand that, rerun the processes, and we were we're getting close to the end of the time. We always have contingency built in, so we had time to do it. it. It's just that it puts the team under more pressure when they're running out of time and you've got to do something, undo it, redo it again. So the lessons learned were really just ensuring that the, the project is uh, more closely monitored. And what I've also done over the last year is that we've uh, appointed a project manager sort of in our team. That was one of the roles that I was given permission to actually was, um, report to, uh, recruit to, use the right word, recruit to. So we've got that person in place now. So what we've also done, that's why it was um, imperative that we did the lessons learned. So that person went through what we did, understood what the process needs to be. And now it will be managed primarily by one person engaging all of the three teams across the whole pensions administration team. So it's just making sure one person is actually owning that everybody's doing their correct role and nobody's missing something. So I'm hoping that that, um, that proved that I needed a, a project manager basically with the pensions increase because you've got teams do occasionally go into slight silo mode. And I think it's just ensuring that they're ensuring they're communicating wider uh, and understanding how something, um, especially the systems team, how an improvement or a change in the system does affect the day-to-day -day running of the operations team. So. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Do we have any other questions for the Debbie, please? On item six. Thank you, Debbie. That's very, very good answer. Thank you very much.
item seven of the pensions committee reports and feedback. Uh, do we have any board members to raise any questions on the recent pensions committee meeting? You will have access to both the live stream and the paperwork if you wanted it. I, I I did raise a uh, chairman. I did I did raise a point with um, Rebecca, uh, and I think she passed this on to James um, or Justin. Um, there was a very very good report of that meeting in the and in the public part of the meeting from Mercers um, on valuations um, uh, and actuarial valuations of the scheme. Um, I think I, I gather this has been recorded and, and is available somewhere. In the ether, is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's that correct. correct. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't think we can afford to get Mercers back into the um, back into the pension board to go through it. But it'd be, I think it'd be useful when we are completely quarters. If we were all six members are sitting around the table, if that report could be at least um, presented again, uh, whether. It's from Justin or James or just through the recording, because um, I found it most uh, most illuminating. Uh, unless other members of the committee have seen that, uh, they're missing something. I attended the uh, committee virtually, and uh, it was a very, very good hour, hour and a quarter presentation. Yeah. Well worth watching online. Thank you, Mike. Any other? Questions from there? No, no. Um, no. The, the presentation will be made because it, it, it was recorded. But I don't think it is actually updated oh. online yet. I think that is still with the committee services to upload. So when it's there, we can certainly share that around. But I'm not aware that it's physically on the um, Pensions Committee website yet. Okay, thank you for that. I, I have raised a question with Sarah Times and he's the Pensions Committee. Oh, I'll send that to see the so when it's there, we can share. And maybe we can have an um, item agenda next time that we actually discuss that before, because I also watched the pensions committee and it was very, very good. It was very well presented. Yeah. Very uh, factual from our point of view. And I think, I think given the, um, the fact that we'll see a inflation on pensions, um, both existing and, and future ones, um, it really sort of begs the question: Has the uh, the fund cope uh, in these extreme conditions? Uh, extreme inflation, extreme increases to pensioners, um, and uh, markets which are, um, to say the least, problematic at the moment. Yeah, fully, fully agree. Justin, have you got anything to say? Yeah, so. Um so we had the, the update on the valuation probably six, seven months ago for some of the pension committee members. So we thought it was a, a good idea to have a refreshing session for the new members of the committee so they can you know, go through because every three years we go through this process. But that's one of the things that has you know, fundamentally changed since we went through it last time um, because of uh, the war in Ukraine and Russia. So inflation, as everybody knows, is the latest figures around about 9%. Um, but obviously, with the valuation, we're looking over the long term, so in the, over the next 20, 25 years. So there is going to be a short term impact, and you know there's going to be you know, increases to interest rates. We've all seen that as well. Um, so that will all be factored in. But you know we are looking over the, the longer term here, and there will be these short term blips. Um, the hope is that you know it could go. Inflation could be higher for for longer than we originally thought. But also the Bank of England is uh, raising rates to try and control the levels of inflation and trying to get it back down to the, the two percent levels, which is their mandate. Um, so, yeah. Thank you for that, Justin. Um, I've got an observation on the pensions committee. Uh, the members attending. Um, we was told during the during the meeting that uh, Shropshire Council is forty percent of members. Telford and Rican are 25 to 30 percent of members, that's equal 65, 70 percent. However, there was again, there was no Telford reps on the meeting. Are we, are we picking these people? I appreciate Ray Evans and giving their apologies, but we've got substitutes for the pensions committee 
So they should the two be brought forward. Could you uh, is any comment on that, please, just I think we did um, contact all substitute members as well, but they were unavailable, so I sent their apologies. Um, I think they're waiting for the cabinet meeting um, in July, because that's when they nominate who sits on various committees. Um, so we took them in detail, but we did have um, apologies from um, Councillor Carolyn Peely um, three or four weeks before the meeting. And then unfortunately, Ray Evans and Klaus, Councillor Ray Evans, another meeting came up a couple of days before the meeting, so she couldn't attend. So the, the substitutes were invited, but unable to make this. this okay, nice thank meeting. you for that. Just, you know, it keeps on happening, and we should really get onto the leader of Telford and Reading Council and say to them, your members are not attending. It's vital, you know, with 25 to 30% of the members actually in the pension fund, quite vital that we're there. Yeah. Yeah, I fully agree with Mike. The the evaluation presentation by Mercer was really really good. It was good to watch this online. First of all, to view and uh, any other points from the uh, pensions committee reports or feedback. No ones. Thank you very much for that. Move on to item eight. The date of the next meeting. The meeting of the pension board will be held at 10 a.m on the 14th of October, 2022. Item 9, exclusion of the press and public. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you can read out the, um, read out the OK. Item 9, to resolve that in accordance with the provision of Schedule 12A of the Local Government Act 1972, Section 5 of the Local Authorities Executive Arrangements, Meetings and Access to Information, England. Regulations and paragraph 3 of the Council's Access to Information Rules, the public and press to be excluded during consideration, consideration of the following items. Thank you. Now I'm going to turn off the line, please. Yeah, just waiting. Okay. 